<clears throat> okay, uh, hey guys, it's the Andy Son here. Uh, apparently, it's recording now, which is uh, good news for me and you, kind of, sort of. But uh, anyway, yeah, this is my first actual vlog. Yeah, I'm just, I finally got my stupid ancient piece of crap webcam to work, and uh, well, since it doesn't have its own microphone, I'm just using this one right here. It's just a basic karaoke mic that I got from a Walmart, only like 10 bucks. It's not bad, and it, you know, it probably gives you better audio than a standard, like, webcam mic or whatever, so, uh, yeah, it all works out, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Yeah, work was really, uh, brutal today. I work at this, uh, new restaurant. It's, uh... <laughs> I work as the dish boy, so, I mean, it, it's very... You're expected to be like an octopus back there, I guess. <laughs> and, uh... I'm sorry, I keep on looking away. I I keep on hearing something kind of off screen. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like a person or if it's just my own imagination. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> excuse me again. <laughs> I got a scratchy throat! And, uh, yeah. I've just been working all week. And, uh, I've been, uh, Oh, sorry. Uh, I've been uh, going on uh, long bike rides, too, because uh, where I live at, there's a uh, bike trail that goes, like, five or seven miles, I think. It, uh, it's probably five, is what I'm guessing. And uh, I go all the way from the bike trail, from where I live, to the bike trail, to the next town's Walmart which is another five miles and uh, so round trip is about 20 some odd miles so I mean that helped me lose a couple LBs I'm not like morbidly obese or anything but I could stand it if you lose a couple pounds or two yeah just a couple pounds I guess I don't know but I keep on weighing myself every day and I don't seem to be losing much weight. I don't know if I'm just losing fat and gaining muscle or what. That, that's what my aunt says, even though I actually look a lot better than when I first started. But hey, I'll just have to, you know, keep on keeping on until it starts snowing. <laughs> I'll be biking and be really, really cold. I'll be like, eh. <laughs> Uh, anyway, in my spare time, besides biking and working and browsing the computer for God knows how many hours, I also play guitar. And, uh, well, it's, it's over there. There. With my arm. Arm. There, oh, okay. There it is. Yeah, it's over there. Yeah. There-ish. Yeah, sorry, this webcam doesn't have much of a view. It's just kind of like a little, little boxed-in view. It's like, I don't know where my hands are. My hands are over here. You can't see it. It's over here, off-screen. Flipping you off. Uh-huh. Uh, man, this, web, this vlog is becoming really retarded, I guess, because... Yeah. Yeah, because I don't really uh, have much to say. So, um, yeah, I'm probably going to kill this. But I'll just keep it for the lulls, I suppose. Well, uh, peace. Guess what, kids? Andy San's got his own camera now. So that means he can finally vlog. Oh, yeah. Good times. Good times indeed. So yeah, this is my first official vlog. Yes, I've done some uh, vlogging in the past, but that was with, you know, an inferior setup. Now I have my own camera, which is a uh, Sanyo Zacti CG6. You know, kind of a starter entry model. 
budget, cheapo, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, it's it's just really great for the money. I mean, I just wanted a camera with a flip out screen because uh, I've operated on uh, my friend Ariopolis' camera. And uh, his is just like a basic like snapshot camera, like, you know, Kodak or something. So I wanted something with a flip out screen because I always found it tedious to kind of, you know, go like this and then uh, 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 uh to just kind of see, you know, what's going on. So I decided to get this little puppy off of eBay for about 122 bucks. Normal retail, it sells for about 200 And uh, Walmart, they had it a uh, clearance to like 133 So even with shipping and all that shit, which collectively added up to 120 I think it was 22 or 27 I don't quite remember. You know, I saved like 12 bucks. So I mean, bitchin'. But uh, the big drawback with this camera is that the uh, tripod mount is stripped, which isn't really that big of a deal right now. And I think honestly, later on, I could get it repaired for like next to nothing. And uh, the only other like quote unquote problem is that it comes with a 512 memory card, which means I can only hold about 20 minutes of you know video footage on this thing, which isn't so bad. I mean, that's you know perfect size for vlogging. But uh, if I wanted to do something more, like maybe capture some footage and then later on edit it and just kind of like compile everything, then we'd have a bit of a problem. So I plan on, not anytime soon, but you know in the future, to uh, purchase a uh, bigger memory card obviously. This thing is SDHC compatible, so I can go up to like 4, maybe even like 16 gig, no, no problem. So I'm pretty confident about this camera and uh, the future that you know it will bring me because when I bought this camera my uh, parents were obviously a little pissed because right, right now I'm saving up for a car because my old one broke down in I think it was July you'll have to read my blog to be sure you can locate my blog at uh, www.theandysan.com anyway it, the truck broke down and I've been uh, looking for a new vehicle ever since Right now, I have about 250, maybe 240 uh, saved up for right now. And my parents are a little pissed because it's the beginning of September and I only have 250 bucks saved up. Now, granted, I get paid this uh, coming Thursday, but still, they're really quite pissed that, you know, I'm splurging all my money, you know, buying cameras and shit. But they don't realize the potential that a camera can bring me. I mean, look at, you know, Tay Zonday, freaking Chocolate Rain dude. He had, you know, camera, a sheet, microphone, and a piano. And he recorded Chocolate Rain, which got, you know, millions of views on YouTube. And got him, you know, gigs on, like, the Jimmy Kimmel show. And, you know, other things like that. Now, I don't plan on recording, you know, anything like Chocolate Rain or anything like that. But, I do plan on selling some of my items on eBay. S you know, just so that way I can save up for my vehicle faster than just simply working all the time. And, to be honest, I don't really like my job at Walmart that much. It's, uh, it's very, just, monotonous. And, uh, I mean, it's a very easy job. It's not really physically demanding or anything like that, which is good. Because, you know, I'm not that very physical of a person. But, it's just... It's the same thing, day in, day out, you get, you know, the same customers wanting the same things, talking about the same stuff, and it's just, it's really boring. You know, I want, you know, something a little more, I don't know, intellectually stimulating, which is why I have applied at Bowling Green State University. I plan on majoring in uh, Asian studies with an emphasis on Japanese. Now, this program is a three-year program, even though it's a bachelor's degree, which is, you know, a four-year program, but it's done within three years, which will save me a shit ton in the long run. Now, I also plan on a dual minoring in a management information systems and creative writing. I wanted to uh, dual minor in a management inf information systems and creative writing because with management information systems, I can utilize my old credits from ITT Tech and uh, actually do something with them because 
if I just, you know, majored in Asian studies and that was it, then all my old credits from ITT Tech would just, you know, go to waste. And besides, I have, I think, around 26 or 27 credit hours. So I figure, you know, what the hey, they're just kind of sitting around doing nothing. Let's, you know, actually use them. And uh, besides, I think I have enough, you know, for a minor in management information systems anyway. I may have to take like a class or two, but that's about it. Now, for creative writing, it's, it's a little bit more obvious why I'm picking that. It's because I want to uh, expand and uh, have my blog grow. Because I feel right now that my writing just isn't where, you know, I want it to be. I mean, it's getting better, but not quite as good as I think it can be. Because, I mean, I've looked at some of my old, you know, my old posts and uh, some of the writing I did back when I was at Urbana University. And it's just like, I, I can do so much better. I mean, I've done a lot of great things when I was in college. I mean, so, you know, let's just try to go back. Even though, yes, I owe Urbana University a ton of money, but, you know, my mom insisted that, you know, I apply somewhere else and see what happens. I mean, worst case scenario, I'm just out 40 bucks for the uh, application fee. And that's about it. So, I decided, oh, what the hell, let's go for it. And I applied, they got my application fee, and uh, because my GPA was so low coming out of both high school and ITD Tech, they uh, said I wasn't accepted, but they gave me a chance to appeal it because my GPA was kind of like borderline. I think their uh, minimum requirement GPA is uh, 2.5, but mine was like 2.33 or like 2.0 or something like that. So it was close, but not quite up to their standards. So I was given the chance to appeal it, obviously did. I sent in the appeal letter about a week or so ago, and uh, I haven't heard back from them yet, but I called them, not today, but uh, the other day, and they said that normally, since I applied for the spring semester, which is the beginning of, Jul of a January, I almost said July, <laughs> you know, it takes a little bit longer to process everything, which... I mean, I can understand, but also, in the same sense, I want to know if I'm going to college or not. So, I mean, I want to, uh, I don't want to go out and buy a bunch of things and then have them come back saying, you know, Andy, you're not accepted because of blah, 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 blah. Like, oh shit, I bought a whole bunch of stuff for my dorm and I can't use it. Fuck. <laughs> so, I wanted to make sure as soon as possible, and whether or not I'm accepted at Bowling Green, and if I am, then, you know, I won't immediately go out and buy things, but just kind of like one at a time, because I still have a lot of old things from Urbana that I can still use, like my uh, sheets and things like that, which, honestly, when I went to Urbana, that was the most expensive thing to buy. So, yeah, I've got that covered. Got the trash can covered. I've still got, like, a shit ton of liners left from uh, my one of my old roommates. He, uh, my first roommate at Urbana, left, I think only like not even a month into it, and uh, he left a lot of stuff like some of his posters and uh, trash liners, which, you know, thank God, because I had no freaking money. So I mean, that, that saved me a lot, and I hardly ever used them when I was in college. I mean, it's mostly my new roommate that, you know, used the trash. I mean, I was very, I, I like to think, you know, I was very efficient with my trash. And plus, you know, I didn't really have a lot, so that kind of contributes to it, too. Now, I see that we're approaching the 10-minute uh, limit for YouTube, so I'm going to have to stop here. And uh, let's just uh, sign off real quick. Okay, this is the Andy Son, hoping that you guys all have a good day, and I look forward to uh, seeing you all in the future. Bye now. Hey, guys, it's the Andy Son here doing my second vlog. I'm just kind of walking around my neighborhood again to uh, just, I don't know, kind of get out of the house. It's kind of an overcast day, but it's got a nice cool breeze. thought I'd uh, kind of discuss uh, current events in my life. Um, I just got off the phone um, earlier this uh, morning or afternoon, I don't even remember anymore, with uh, the uh, head guy of admissions, I guess he's the dean of admissions or something, and uh, 
he said that I'm not able to attend BGSU at the moment because of my low GPA. Now, uh, like I said before, I did write them an appeal letter. They received it. It went to the uh, head dean or whatever, and uh, he didn't approve. So, you know, I was kind of depressed, but the dean of admissions said that I am able to uh, go to BGSU, but first I have to complete some uh, like remedial courses over at uh, the local uh, lake campus. So that's, that's not too bad. I mean, I checked the pricing and uh, it's like friggin' dirt cheap. I knew that the lake campus was really cheap, but I didn't know it was that cheap. I mean, goddamn. I could probably, you know, work a summer or two and be just fine. But, uh, yeah, I definitely won't be able to pay for it up front. Maybe I will, I don't know. But, uh, currently, I'm still saving up for a vehicle because in July my uh, truck broke down and I got super screwed out of that whole deal. I had it towed over to a local mechanic. He said that I uh, physically broke the crankshaft, which for uh, you guys who are mechanically inclined know that that's probably the most indestructible part of an entire car. And how that got broke, um, I'm not so sure. So he said to repair it would cost uh, $1,500 which I only bought the truck for like 900 so I said, you know, fuck that noise. And I decided to sell it to him to cover cost of towing, labor, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he also gave me 75 bucks out of it. <laughs> and uh, after I did that, I told my friends about it and they said, you know, why didn't you scrap it? And I said, well, I thought about it, but I didn't think that, you know, I'd get too much more out of it. But they said that, Considering it was such an old truck and was full of, you know, so much metal that I would have gotten, you know, after all the expenses and everything, probably like four or five hundred bucks. I was like, shit. <laughs> I'm a dumbass. But, uh, I admit to being completely car tarted. I don't know a single thing about cars and, uh, I don't really care to know about, it. you know, cars. It's not really interest of mine. Huh. These are neighbors. Maybe. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So I've been saving up since, like, July, August. And thus far, as of this check, I have over 500 bucks in the bank. Which is pretty good. But, uh, I'm trying to, uh, make some more money. And, you know, I've been trying to work, you know, extra hours, which definitely helps. But it's only, you know, to a certain extent. So I've been trying to uh, think of things I could sell on, like, eBay or something. And right now I'm just kind of, you know, playing it by ear. I'm, you know, just going to sell, like, one thing at a time just to kind of see what goes down. And currently, the only thing I have up on eBay right now is a, uh, an old, like, a uh, DSL cable router that my stepdad gave me and uh, it's really nice but you know currently right now I don't have any use for it right now so I mean it works I'll probably put the link up to the auction on the side so you guys could check it out and uh, yeah I'm planning on selling it for like a, I think I have it up there for like 35 40 bucks 12 bucks shipping, 18 if you really want it fast. And then, uh, that's just in the US, so around the world it's like 100 bucks. You know, I kind of looked up like other like cities, you know, like Tokyo, Germany, like Canada, I think it's like 84 bucks. Everywhere else is like 150 some odd bucks. So, I mean, I think honestly 100 bucks for shipping is like a friggin' steal. That's just my opinion. Anyway, getting back to this whole Bowling Green thing, yeah, I, I am, you know, kind of pissed at the whole thing, but I think looking back, you know, I think this is actually, you know, really good for me, because it'll allow me to uh, get
get rid of all those you know extra crap courses I don't really need and uh, still give me more time to kind of save up my money so that way uh, I can you know get the car without worrying you know oh shit I gotta go to BGSU soon so you know I can kind of pace myself a little bit but I'm still trying to save up as fast as I can because you know, winter's coming up and I don't want to be riding around my bike or my brother's moped you know when it's you know fucking freezing don't forget that but uh, also you know I won't have to spend a shit ton on uh, you know basic you know essential classes so I mean that's good I won't have to I mean that's basically the thing that really killed me at you know ITT Tech and Urbana was uh, the fact I had to take you know essential classes and I mean I can kind of see the practicality in it but in the same sense I mean if you're gonna be you know offering you know I think that for uh, the essential classes they should have you know a lower cost so that way I'm not paying like friggin sixteen thousand a semester just to get you know basic English or basic math I mean fuck that noise now if they charge like significantly less you know since I'm taking that particular class you know maybe take like a tuition break or give me a laptop or something so that way you know it's not so financially painful then it's like oh, okay you know it's essential but you know I get a free laptop or a tuition break so it's no big deal but I mean they charge the same price for every class except for like science classes or whatever is that a dead frog? check this out it's a dead frog that's disgusting what the hell is it? looks like a frog or something that's disgusting Oh. That was weird. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I'm really loving this camera, to be honest. But uh, yeah, anyway, getting back to uh, uh, Bowling Green. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of got. I lost my uh, train of thought there with the whole dead frog. And uh, yeah, getting back to Bowling Green. I think, you know, it'll actually be good for me in the long run because I'll be able to complete some remedial classes at pretty much next to nothing and uh, get all that out of the way, boost my GPA so I'll be able to uh, attend BGSU you know on a better note than like just scraping by you know like just barely a 2.5 and you know it also get me like mentally ready because I think honestly if I were to just you know hop into BGSU right now I'd I'd probably do okay, but it all depends on the classes, and uh, I just need to get my mind, you know, my, not just, you know, mentally, but also, like, I just need to, you know, prepare myself for college. As far as supplies and all that stuff goes, I've pretty much got myself covered. I can pretty much use, you know, all my old supplies from Urbana, hook pens, paper, things like that. I might have to buy some folders, but, you know, that's like no big deal. No big deal at all. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, also, you know, fuck allergies. Fuck them hardcore. They're totally messing with, you know, me getting my story done and all that. So, I am getting better, if you guys are wondering. And, uh, this is approaching the 10-minute mark again. So, this is the Andy Son, signing off. You guys all have a good day. Hey guys, it's Sandy Sun here with my third vlog, and uh, it's also my first day off in about six days, which is, you know, pretty sweet. Um, I just kind of wanted to bring you guys up to speed as to what's going on, besides this uh, kind of blustery, uh, nice sunshiny day. Howdy. Look at the sky. It's kind of beautiful out today. Nice. It's kind of dark over there. Yeah. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, talk with you guys about 
uh, my car situation. Uh, I just got done talking with uh, my friend Ben's mom, who uh, has a car that I'm uh, looking to purchase, and uh, she uh, talked to her husband about it, who's a you know a car mechanic, and uh, he says that currently right now uh, he's not looking to sell his the vehicle, and uh, so I'm I'm a little miffed at all that, and. Uh, but it's okay because I know that excuse me, I know that you know it'll take time for me to save up anything for a car anyway. So you know, I, know. I want to uh, actually get a vehicle that will uh, last me more than just a couple months. So either way, you know, I just kind of figured, you know, since you know that car is that car has been sitting there for about two years. And, uh, you know, it's not really doing anything. It just needs a new transmission and a new battery. So, I figured, you know, since it's not really doing anything, I could just, you know, buy it off him for like 2,000 bucks. But, uh, apparently he's gonna use it for something else. I don't know what. But, uh, you know, whatever. But, uh, he might change his mind. I don't, I don't know right at the moment. So, uh, we'll see. But, you know, like I told her, either way, it's still gonna take me till November to uh, save up money for a decent car because I'm not going to sell for you know these $500, $800, you know piece of shit you know dump trucks that are just going to like fucking die on me within like three months you know fuck that you know I want to actually uh, have a vehicle that can sustain me for you know at least two or three years I mean, that's all I ask and uh yeah, that's pretty much, you know, the big thing that's going on. Oh, also, uh, I've been trying to get in touch with my neighbor to see if he can fix my moped so I don't have to ride my bike all the fucking time to work. Uh, so far, he's been uh, kind of busy at the moment, so I haven't been able to uh, track him down and talk to him about it. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going on. Uh, right now, at the moment, I'm just kind of, uh, you know, out and about on my uh, day off, home and around Montezuma, no not uh, South America, but a uh, little Midwestern hell. Uh, actually it's a nice looking place, but people here are amazingly backwards. <laughs> but yeah, that's just kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm thinking of uh, cruising around the bike path because I heard there's a uh, really decent bike path around here. I've never actually gone down it, so uh, I'll just kind of take a little cruise and uh, maybe uh, come back and do another vlog. So, uh, see you guys in a little bit. Hey guys, it's Andy Son here. I just want to take you on a little trip through my hometown. Just going to bike. I'm going to visit, you know, my normal, like, little hangouts and places that I go when I go for a bike ride. So, uh, come check it out. Oh, and uh, here's a little shot of the sky. Random sky shot. It's a beautiful day today. So, I decided on this beautiful day, on my day off, to go for a bike ride. So, that's a roll. Hey guys, I'm just uh, by the lake, which is uh, in my hometown, the uh, focal point. As you can kind of tell from behind my big old head, there's a lot of stuff back there. Here, let me give you a closer look. So, Look at all that, like, there's some boats, more lake. This is uh, our new sidewalk that I'm on right now. See, look how new it is. Yeah, fun times. It's, uh, I usually, uh, yeah, I used to uh, just uh, bike by a, a, a uh, cornfield, but I decided to take this route by the lake just because, you know, something different and, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's beautiful, you know, if I, you know, when I do decide to leave the area, I know I will uh, definitely miss the lake. I know that a lot of people who come here, you know, definitely come here for the lake, as it's, you know, the big focal point. You know, besides that, there's, you know, not really much else going on in town, as far as, you know, people who live outside are concerned. I mean, there's like lake fests and other festivals slash excuses to get like insanely drunk. <laughs>
So, yeah. I'm gonna go to uh, the next location, which is uh, the music store. It's a place I like to go to often when I go on a bike ride. Oh, and uh, by the way, if you guys are wondering uh, what kind of bike I use, uh, here you go. It's an old, I'm guessing like 89 or 91 Huffy Stone Mountain. It's mostly original parts, except things I added were the, uh, the lock, a little uh, light. Back here we got a little flashy light thing right here. I added uh, new tires, new tires and tubes. If you look real carefully, I also added a new uh, rim for the back tire. It's even still got the little sticker on it. It's that new. The reason I did that was uh, because some fucking cunt decided to uh, pull out really quick and she uh, hit my back tire. Now, uh, I didn't fall off or sustain any kind of injuries or anything like that. I mean, it was she was just pulling out of a gas station, so she wasn't going very fast. But uh, it still kind of put a dent in uh, the rim, so uh, was, the bike was just kind of wobbling whenever I rode it. So I decided to, you know, man up, pay uh, 27 or 30 some odd bucks to get a new rim. The guy even uh, put the thing on the little sprocket, so uh, that was pretty nice of him. And uh, I think the next thing that I will definitely get for this bike, are, uh, or at least fix, would be the brakes. I've, def I've done some work on them, so they're not too bad. Uh, they're at least not as bad as they were, but uh, they're still pretty bad. I mean, I have virtually no stopping power, so I just kind of like hang on for dear life if uh, somebody comes like darting out in front of me. With that said, let's go to the music store. Okay, right now I've just arrived at the music store, so uh, apparently John's here now, so uh, we'll go see what he's up to. What's this wanker doing here? Let's get a front view of that beast. What? Let's get a front view of it. Oh, I remember playing that. That's yeah, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's all scratchy. Oh, that's cool looking. We got all those stickers, dude. It's insane. Looks like they didn't really have uh, anything too different. I was surprised that they still had that Epiphone SG in there. I thought that would, you know, sell it really quick, but uh, I guess it had bad strings or something. I mean, do people know you can change them? So, uh, let's see. Uh, where to next? Where to next? Before I go, I gotta show you guys uh, John's windshield. <laughs> you guys are gonna kick out of this. <sighs> Check that out. It's all cracked and shit. Yeah, his uh, his hood came up and uh, cracked. See, the little things just kind of went right into the windshield. It's all over the place, man. Oh, yeah, kind of uh, jerry rigged or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. I think uh, next stop would be good buzz around Walmart if you want. Yeah, Walmart sounds good. Even though it is my first day off in a while, so. Yeah, Walmart it is. Okay, so I'm at Walmart now. And I'm in the, like, mirror section. Look, there's me behind you. Oh, no. Check it out. Uh, trippy. Yeah, so we got mirrors. 
Look, shiny Buddha. Check it out. Mm. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see what other stuff's here. Eh, not much, you know, just your standard super Walmart. So, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, ooh, a nice futon. Check it out. Oh. Look at it all. That's nice. Uh, not very practical. Uh, let's see. And now we're in my favorite section, Walmart. The computer section. Check out this little baby. I really want this one. Check it out. High definition, flat screen, quad core, 3 gig RAM, 320 gig hard drive. I haven't seen the LCD screen yet, so I don't know where it's at. I mean, it's even got like a firewire port up there. Oh, what those card readers? Nice. Okay, check this little baby out. It's a laptop I want to get too. Check it out. It's got little slider buttons. That is essential. That is essential. That's really funny. Come on. There we go. Okay. It's also got a webcam in there, and I can see it. But yeah, the little number pe number pad that is essential. Okay, so that was basically Walmart. I mean, I kind of wish I would have showed you more, but you guys pretty much go to Walmart every day, so there's no real reason for me to do that. And I kind of felt a little weird uh, carrying a camera and talking to myself in Walmart. Now, if it was like at Walmart in another town, it wouldn't really give so much of a shit, but uh, I work here, so then I'm just uh, awkward, I guess. Um, that was Walmart. Ooh, wow. Sun's coming in. Yeah, this should be fun. I'm really super hungry, so uh, I'm gonna go and uh, get something to eat real quick over at home. Actually, that won't be very quick at all. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go home and uh, see what mom wants for uh, supper. So, I will see you guys later. I just want to uh, discuss what's going on today. My stepdad decided to uh, kick out one of our dogs. Her name was Lido. Uh, she was around four years old, I believe. I'm really upset about the whole situation. My mom's just, you know, she's a wreck. We decided to uh, let her go around the uh, Ohio-Indiana state line because we knew, well, she knew, that uh, dogs in the Humane Society don't really last too long. I mean, they're only there a week and then, you know, they're euthanized. So we decided to uh, at least give her a fighting chance. We uh, gave her something to eat something to drink, and uh, we took her all the way out to the Ohio-Indiana state line and released her. You know, it's a very, very bad time, you know, right now. I mean, not only with, you know, John's bizarreness, but uh, the whole thing with Lido. And the reason that uh, my stepdad decided to kick her out was uh, because she uh, chewed on the carpet, on the new carpet. She chewed on our uh, previous carpet, and uh, we had it repaired. It uh, apparently took a lot of money and a lot of time for her to do that, so obviously my stepdad was a little pissed about the whole thing. But I personally don't really see it as a reason to kick Lido out. I think it's just because of the pressure that uh, John is putting on our family with his little shenanigans that uh, it's causing everybody to just stress out. Mom was crying pretty much the whole way and uh, I was I was a wreck myself. I decided, you know, at that point that enough is enough. I'm tired of living in that house. I'm tired of all the dysfunction that goes on in that house. I mean, I'm not gonna move back in with uh, my aunt and cousins. I'm going to move out on my own. But once I've saved up enough money for a car and I've purchased a car that is uh, dependable and around the $1,500 to $2,000 range, I'm going to save up again. I'm going to save up around 1500 to 2500 to uh, move out. 
Now, I talked to my friend Cody. He says that uh, on average you have to uh, be working full time and have uh, be uh, earning ten dollars uh, an hour in order to you know comfortably make it. And uh, that's that's probably true, but you know with my current living situation, you know I'm going to go insane because you know I, I honestly can't handle it anymore. So what I'm going to do, you know, save up that money after I've purchased a vehicle. I'm going to move out to Bowling Green, Ohio. I'm going to obviously secure a job over there. I could, by that point, I could transfer to uh, the Bowling Green Walmart, but at least with Bowling Green, there are plenty of job opportunities. I could go back into uh, working at a restaurant. I could uh, work at another retail. I mean, I could work at uh, Kroger. They're, offer they're offering uh, positions. I mean, cashiers for uh, starting out at eight bucks an hour. I could do that. Since I have experience, I'll obviously get more than that. So, I could do that. There are just a whole bunch of other things that, you know, things I don't even know of that are available to me at Bowling Green. So, I've decided to do that. My uh, friend Ariopolis, he says that he's uh, going to attend uh, Bowling Green University, or State University, sorry, next year. I may or may not be rooming with him after a while, if I can uh, get out of the lease. Normally, since Bowling Green is a college town, they most apartments have a uh, six-month or three-month uh, lease agreement instead of, you know, the standard yearly agreement. So I might be able to get an apartment for, you know, six months or whatever, or just do it in, you know, three-month increments until he gets an apartment, then, you know, we can, you know, collectively look for an apartment, and uh, we can go from there. If I do have to, uh, if I do end up, you know, g getting an apartment with a uh, yearly agreement, I'm pretty sure that, uh, I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to uh, get out of it, or at least pay the uh, last month's rent, because it'd only be off by about a month because he would probably be moving to Bowling Green in August. Yeah, I think my best bet would be to find an apartment with like a three or six month lease agreement, or none at all, that would actually be ideal. But uh, most apartments do have uh, lease agreements, so I will try to find an apartment with a three to six month lease agreement, so that way I can uh, move out with my friend Ariopolis when he attends Bowling Green State University. He's going there for uh, grad school, and uh, so he'll have a, a monthly stipend, which will uh, be his source of income, and uh, we'll do it from there. Um, there's also a, a possibility of uh, one of our other friends from college rooming with us. Um, I'm not really for sure on this. I'm not sure if our Ariopolis is either, but uh, we have to uh, ask him because... Uh, I just want to, you know, get the situation taken care of as quickly as possible. So uh, that way, you know, I know what I'm getting myself into instead of, uh, will, you know, Ariopolis get himself an apartment and, uh, you know, will it be a three bedroom with uh, some guy, some other guy from college that I know, or will it just be me and him? So I need to get, you know, these facts taken care of because I think both, uh, both people, Ariopolis and the uh, other guy, are uh, really busy. It's their uh, last year at Urbana University, so they're obviously, you know, a little busy with, you know, final things that they have to do. So I'm going to talk to them, which is see uh, if that's what they want to do. I won't actually go into specifics as far as, like, you know, which apartment complex we want to live in and things like that, but I do want to at least make sure and confirm we will be all rooming together or not. Because if we're not, if, you know, Ariopolis just wants to go on his own, or if he wants to room with somebody else, then, you know, I'll just get whatever apartment comes to me. I don't really give a shit if it's a yearly agreement or not. So, I just want to make sure so that way I don't get myself uh, locked into a situation where, you know, I'm, you know, stuck. Because I originally wanted to uh, move to Bowling Green uh, with Ariopolis. And, you know, we both go to uh, Bowling Green State University. But, as you guys know, I was uh, not accepted to Bowling Green State University because my GPA was really low. But uh, I was going to take remedial classes here at the uh, Wright State Lake campus, 
But because of my current living situation, I've decided uh, against that. It may or may not be the uh, wisest choice that I've made, but I feel that right now I could not function. I mean, I could not function on an academic level or on a work level, continuing to live where I'm living and under the conditions that I'm living. Like I said, I'm trying to save up around 1500 2500 maybe even 3000 if I can, and then uh, I'm going to uh, move out. I'm going to look for an apartment, look for a job. First, I got to get the job secured. Then uh, once that's done, you know, the apartment will just fall into place. So that's uh, all I really wanted to say right now. But uh, I have to get back because I got to go back. I have to uh, go to work soon. So uh, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, have fun. Hey guys, it's Andy Sant here. I want to discuss uh, what happened with John these past couple days. On Sunday, he was set to uh, go to X-Fest in Dayton, Ohio, but uh, he, bought, he bought the ticket, but he didn't go. He ended up talking with my aunt and cousin. I'm not sure exactly what they were talking about, but he did go over there and talk with them for hours. At least, you know, that's what he says. When he came back, it was around 10 or 11, he said that he was, you know, going to check himself into rehab for a uh, various drug addictions. Um, the only drugs that he admitted to me using was uh, just pot and tobacco, like cigars, cigarettes, that sort of thing. But uh, because of his erratic behavior, I seriously doubt that, that was, those were the only two drugs that he was using. So, you know, I was really glad that he was uh, admitting that he had a problem and that he was going to rehab. So I'm like, you know, thinking to myself, thank God he gets it. You know, this is the healing process, you know, everything's going to turn around. Unfortunately, the next day, he went to school really, really late. He said that he was going to get a ride from his friend, but he apparently never picked him up because he was already in school. It was like, he told me this like 20 minutes after school started. So, yeah, obviously his friend's not just going to come get him because he's in school. So he did, you know, leave. I assumed that his friend picked him up, but apparently he didn't. John checked himself into school around, I think he said like 8 or 9, and uh, the uh, person who does attendance in the office said that uh, he pull she pulled John aside and, you know, asked him, you know, what was going on, and uh, he was just being, you know, really, really just defiant, you know, really, really terrible, according to uh, various accounts. Because of his really strange behavior, some people say that he was, you know, just kind of rolling his eyes back and forth, and was just kind of like... You know, just almost like drunk, or just like completely out of it. So the assistant principal called mom at work, told her what was going on, and uh, said that uh, he had reason to believe that he was on some kind of uh, drug. He didn't know uh, what kind of drug, but he had, you know, sufficient reason to believe that he, that John was uh, uh, on drugs. So he told John to uh, take a drug test and uh, John refused. So uh, after some back and forthness, um, Mom agreed to have the court issue a uh, drug test for John, which means that, you know, John can refuse all he wants, but they will, you know, test him for drugs by force if necessary. And uh, they tested him up in a close town here, and uh, he was completely clean. So they were wondering, you know, what was going on. But John told me earlier that, you know, he was too smart. He could, like, pass all the tests. I guess through a extreme detox, like drinking a bunch of green tea, uh, cranberry juice, that sort of thing, and doing a bunch of exercising, you can uh, detox your body really quick. Now, I know that there are some tests out there that are a bit harder to do, like the, uh, I heard that there was like a, a hair test, that I guess if you did, did any kind of drugs within a period of 30 days, they could just like take a little bit of hair off and uh, test it. But uh, I don't know if you can pass that one or not. So, because of his erratic behavior, they, uh, they pulled the judge out to uh, figure out what to do with him because even though he did pass the drug test, he was still acting, you know, really erratic. He was even doing that in the courtroom, according to mom. And, you know, he was being all like, nah, 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 you know, you don't scare me. And the judge was, you know, super pissed at him. She sentenced him a juvenile detention center in Bowling Green until Thursday, which is his court day, for a previous infraction over the weekend with uh, that confrontation with mom. So it's not looking very good for John. He already had the cops call on him uh, two, three times, maybe even four. I've kind of lost track by now. He's already yelled out the judge. 
that uh, is going to preside over his case on Thursday. He's in a juvenile detention center in Bowling Green, so his case isn't really looking that good. So I don't know what's going to happen, but obviously something is going to happen. I don't know if he's going to be sentenced to uh, a juvenile detention center for a week or so, or maybe even a month, two months, three months, who knows. But uh, I think that, you know, it's kind of sad to say this, but I think, you know, it'll definitely be for the best. You know, it'll be in John's best interest to uh, do this because he's just, you know, we try to talk to him. We try to you know, reach out to him to try to, you know, help him. But he just won't listen. He won't listen to us. He's beginning to, you know, not even listen to his own friends. He's just, you know, on a path to self-destruction. And, you know, the best thing we could do right now is have somebody, you know, have like the, the law, you know, the court of law, come in and, you know, tell him, you know, you know, this is how things are. If you don't like it, you will be arrested. You can, you know, talk off all you want and, you know, all you want, but we will come after you and we will arrest you. So I think that, you know, this will be a tremendous growth experience for John and hopefully he will, you know, get his shit together and, uh, you know, finally come back because I've noticed uh, that he has changed since I moved back here uh, November of last year. But I kind of attributed to, you know, I, well, I wasn't really around him that much because I was in college before that. And then I was living with my uh, aunt and cousins. So I wasn't really around him that much. So I figured, well, you know, he's at that age. He's, you know, a bit differently now, acting a bit differently now. So I just kind of, you know, put it off. But then he started doing a bunch of, like, really, you know, weird things. And it's like, you know, this ain't right, you know. John's not, it's not, you know, becoming older and more mature. He's just, I don't know, it could be just, you know, that age of 17. I mean, I was there too, but uh, I wasn't nearly as defined as John. I mean, even my mom and stepdad said that, you know, I was cookies and milk compared to John. I mean, most of the time when, you know, I was his age, it was usually, you know, my stepdad getting on my case about something. I never, you know, I never picked a fight. I never, you know, went out of my way to, you know, badger people. I just pretty much, you know, kept to myself. And, you know, people always, like, got on my case about things. And, you know, then I'd yell at him. You know, John, he just goes after people. He's just, you know, like a bulldog or something. He's just like, Aah! So, I mean, I hope that, you know, him being in a juvenile detention center, and I hope that rehab will, you know, turn him back around. Because I know he's, he's very intelligent despite all the dumb shit that he does. And, you know, I hope that he does get into a good college and hope that he gets a good education. I hope that he learned from my mistakes and, you know, takes it seriously and gets scholarships for God's sakes. Because, I mean, we don't have any money. I mean, sure, we got a lot of nice things, but as far as, like, immediate cash, we have none. So he definitely needs to get scholarships. And, you know, he's... He's a senior, so obviously, you know, he's a prime candidate for scholarships and things like that. He's, well, he had a, a good GPA, so as long as he keeps his GPA up and uh, graduates, then, you know, he, he should be good. He, uh, he'll just get some scholarships for whatever university he's going into. And uh, I, I really hope he takes, you know, the whole college thing seriously, like, unlike me, because, you know, I want him to live a life, you know, without worrying about, you know, you know, you, your whole financial scheme will completely crumble like me. You know, I pretty much live paycheck to paycheck, and I hate that style of living. I want to uh, move on from that. I'm trying to adjust my financial, trying to adjust my sources of income to where, you know, I'm not working longer or working a different job. You know, I'm trying to pre present as much value as I can in the way that I can, not just... I basically don't want to be another cog in it. So, well, there'll be more on that later. Uh, I'm going to have to go right now because I think my mom's here. So, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hey guys, it's Danny San here. In my previous video, I discussed embracing my passion and utilizing multiple streams of income instead of just one. Now, let's start with the uh, utilizing multiple streams of income. For those of you who have, who have done your research, this won't be anything, you know, startlingly new. What I would like to do is to um, have more than uh, one source of income. Now, I don't mean uh, getting another job or anything like that. I want to utilize passive streams of income, such as royalties and things like that. Now, in order to do this, I've uh, set up uh, two different things. I have, first off, set up my website with uh, advertisements. Um, I only made like less than a buck. I think it was like 54 cents or so. That's just in the beginning, so I'm not you know, too worried about it. I would like for it to uh, become a uh, 
big source of income for me, but, you know, if it's not doing that well at the moment, I'll just have to uh, retool it. And once I become, you know, more well-known on the Internet, then it'll uh, be a much better source of income because the more people that come to my site, the more possible chances of them clicking on the ads. And plus it took, you know, guys like Steve Pavlina like about a year and a half to two years. Some people even wait to like five years, which is, you know, ages in uh, internet terms, to uh, put up any kind of advertisement or donation buttons or anything like that. I do have a donation button on my website, though. I should uh, probably uh, make better use of it, though, because I haven't gotten any donations yet either. Yeah, utilizing multiple streams of income, such as donations, advertisement space, and also writing, royalties. And uh, which leads me to uh, embracing my passion, which one of my passions is uh, writing. I would like to write young adult fiction, which is, you know, really a lucrative uh, niche in uh, the uh, writing world right now. And also I've, you know, I enjoy that kind of reading that kind of stuff. I mean, I remember back in like seventh, eighth grade, you know, reading, you know, stuff like Goosebumps, Animorphs, I think even back then the Harry Potter series was starting to get underway, although I didn't start to read that until, you know, way later, until I think after the first movie came out is when I started to read it. But I did notice it, though. I did see, like, the little posters and the books up, but never really got into it until, like I said, after the uh, first or second movie. Yeah, it was books like that that really, you know, just inspired me as a person. And they were just, you know, fun to read. I'd totally, like, spend a day or even a week just reading them. Now, I'm not, you know, much of a speed reader. I mean, I could read fast if I want to, but, you know, I actually like to kind of, you know, enjoy reading those kinds of things. So I just kind of, you know, read at, like, a speaking pace. I don't just, like, eh, you know, just go through it like, you know, my friend Ariopolis does. He just, you know, speed, speed reads through the whole thing. But, you know, I like to sit back, kind of take my time. Now, as far as writing goes, I've, uh, well, I've been writing all my life, obviously, you know, in school and things like that, but I didn't really, really get into it until I'd say probably in high school. I mean, I did some things in, like, middle school, but it wasn't, you know, it was just, like, little one-off projects and things like that. But in high school, that was uh, my creative peak. I was writing uh, little, like, ideas for stories, ideas for games, little designs for tables for said games, just, you know, a whole bunch of ideas. So it wasn't just stories, it was also so, uh, like, uh, not really merchandise, but actual, like, tangible products, like tables and things like that. Getting back to writing, I wrote, like, a ton of ideas down, took little pieces of paper, which is what I usually wrote them down on, just, like, little scrap pieces of paper, and uh, put them in, like, a little, like, notebook-type thing, or, like a trapper sort of thing. Binder. That's the word I'm looking for, is binder. Put them in a binder, and... I, uh, I've always had them. I kept them with me even in college, just in case I got an idea. Write down a piece of paper, like a 3x5 uh, index card, slap it in there and go on my merry little way. But since I wanted to take writing a bit more seriously, as more of like a career option, as opposed to just jotting down little ideas all the time, I've decided to uh, reopen the notebook, look through some of my old ideas, and see if I can come up with uh, any stories. And uh, I'm positive I can. There's just so much material there. I mean, I've, I could probably write, you know, 10, 15 books, at least 10, easy. I want to focus on uh, one idea at a time because I don't want to put out all this stuff at once because, you know, I want this to be a sustaining source of income. I want to you know, put out a book, you know, let it sell, let it sell, and then, you know, write another book, put it out, let it sell, let it sell. Obviously, these books will sell even, you know, after their release and after they've, you know, commercially peaked. But I just want to, like, slowly put out my material so it doesn't look like, you know, I'm shoving a whole bunch of stuff down people's throats. And also, you know, just to generally pace myself because I don't want to burn out. I don't want to, you know, write ten books in a row and then just be like, fuck, I'd, I've got nothing else, man. I, I can't write anymore. So I want to pace myself. Right now I'm working on, uh, I think, two or three different little ideas for books. One's called Three, which is based off of uh, three American boys who are uh, living by themselves in Japan after being adopted by an older couple after their parents passed away. And the eldest decided to take in the uh, other two brothers and decided to raise them on his own. That's That's got some good little points to it. I've also got, I've also got uh, The Pearl Lantern, which is about this pearl lantern is about a guy who, uh, it reminds me, I was watching a little bit of Yu Haka show when I thought of this idea, but it's about a guy who, uh, he dies, and, uh, he accidentally, uh, through, uh, he requests that he's, uh, when you die in, uh, my book, 
you are granted uh, one last little wish. You can't wish for the destruction of things, or, you know, the ill will towards people, and you can't wish yourself back to life, at least not permanently. But this guy wished to uh, fulfill some of his life goals. This wish granted him temporary life until he uh, completes his goals. Now, the catch is, this wish, you are uh, given a period of uh, a year when uh, to complete your wish, and if you don't complete it within a year, both you and your assigned uh, spirit reaper, or soul reaper, like Shinigami type, type person, are uh, sentenced to purgatory for all eternity. Yeah, I thought it's a really interesting story, so this guy's only got a year to do everything that he's always wanted to do. So I think it's... I think it's going to be, you know, a really good story. Also, I've got another one. Uh, I just came up with this idea, like, a couple days ago. It's called, uh, kind of debating between, like, the phone or the caller. Probably come up with, a, you know, a snazzier title later. But it's about, you know, a young boy who uh, gets uh, these mysterious calls from, uh, now, the guy doesn't actually speak. He, whenever the boy answers the phone from this mysterious caller, he uh, is able to listen into uh, conversations. It could be conversations, you know, between his parents and, like, somebody else, or it could be uh, also people from the dead. They're not really speaking to him directly. It's just like you're kind of listening in on a conversation. It's like you're almost, like, snooping, but he's on the phone doing it. So nobody can hear him speak, and uh, but he can hear everybody else talk. And they're not talking towards him directly, they're just kind of like in conversation. It's like if you stuck a little, like a mini cassette recorder in a room and just hit record. Nobody knows that the cassette recorder is there, but it's still picking up uh, whatever everybody else is saying. Yeah, I got that idea from uh, one of my brother's friends. He accidentally uh, called the house. He didn't, you know, hear me. I was kind of like, hello? Hello? And, you know, I could hear the whole conversation between him and uh, his counselor. It took me forever to figure out, you know, who it was, though. But I, th I thought at first it was just some kind of, like, prank caller. So I kind of went along with it because, I mean, I had nothing better to do at that time. So I just kind of put the phone on the speaker, ate some food, and uh, just listened in. I couldn't hear everything, but, you know, it was kind of fun. And uh, those are my three main story ideas that I'm currently working on right now. I think I'm going to try to get uh, three out first then uh, either Pearl Lantern or uh, The Caller after that, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, as far as publishing goes, that's something uh, my stepdad brought up, you know. Obviously, you know, I'll need money if I want to publish this in, like, a you know, hardback or paperback form. I talked to a, a local author about, you know, how she got the word out for that, and uh, she basically had uh, some lady, you know, she'd go to, like, book sales and things like that, and uh, she would always, you know, promote this particular author's book. You know, she says, you know, if I buy these books or X amount of books, you know, will you sell this local author's book? And normally they say yes, and she's even on the front page of uh, our local paper. I thought that was really nice. But as far as actually physically publishing the book, I didn't really get too much info on that. But what I want to do is, you know, look around at uh, some publishing companies. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, major, but just something that'll publish, like, you know, a first-time author. If it does cost money to actually publish the thing, even if it's a limited run, then what what I'll do is I'll first uh, publish it as an ebook, put it up on my website, and uh, sell it that way. Once it, you know, generates enough buzz, and it, you know, it sells a decent amount, then I'll use that money to uh, put it in like hardback and paperback form. And you know, by that time, all the other books that I release, I should have some kind of publishing deal, or I should at least be financially able to uh, publish my next book with uh, very little problem. That's what I wanted to talk with you guys about today. Later on, I will discuss uh, what's going on with John. So uh, I'll see you guys then. Bye. Hey guys, it's Danny San here. As uh, some of you may or may not know, I uh, quit my job at Walmart yesterday. I feel really good about that. Even though a lot of people were really concerned about, you know, Oh, Andy, you don't have a job. You don't have any kind of income. You know, what's going to happen? Right now, I am uh, going to uh, set up a website to earn me money. But wait, Andy, you already tried that with not only theandysound.com, but Spicy Melon. What makes you think you're going to do better with this one? Well, basically, I'm going to have other people do it for me. I'm not as experienced as I should be, you know, designing websites, and I feel that I honestly don't need to be. If I really want to take this seriously, I should actually hire people who really know what they're doing instead of me and my grabastic attempts. That's right, I said grabastic. Doing this. I'm not going to outsource the andysan.com or anything like that. That's going to be strictly me. But as far as my main money-making uh, websites, 
that's going to be almost completely outsourced. In fact, I think that will be completely outsourced. I'm planning on uh, finally getting off my ass and uh, revamping SpicyMelon.com. That's going to be my first goal. I plan on making that a social networking site. Users can submit their own recipes. They can submit pictures of the recipes, either in finished form, pictures of the ingredients, pictures of uh, the recipes in step. Like, you know, if you're making bread or something, you see, like, the uh, dough and how it should look at the end of each step. Users can also uh, submit videos from uh, external websites like uh, YouTube, Dailymotion, uh, think about like Rever. I'm really feeling very positive about Spicy Melon not now because I really have no experience actually creating a social networking site, but fortunately for me, there are people out there who do have the experience. And uh, right now I'm going to outsource people to pretty much build the site from the ground up again. Right now I'm going to a website called uh, elance.com. It was recommended to me by uh, Timothy Ferris, author of uh, The 4-Hour Workweek. He says he's got a lot of uh, good virtual assistants, or uh, VA, VAs, I should say, from uh, that website. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I told them that I only have uh, between 50 to 500 bucks to play with, which is the minimum amount that you can submit. So we'll see how uh, well they get it done. And yes, I know I'm burning my money by doing this, but I feel that if they actually do a really good job, I could easily recoup the money because I plan on having uh, maybe like advertisements, things of that nature to uh, generate income for me from those sites, as well as uh, possible joint ventures. But I think maybe joint ventures could be kind of weaved in along with the regular ads. We'll see how it goes. Test something if it doesn't work, remove it and try something else. That's basically the name of the game when it comes to uh, doing stuff online. Yeah, my parents were uh, pretty pissed that I uh, quit my job. I don't care though. They want me to uh, immediately get another job. I might as well be dead because I don't have a job. The difference between me now and me back in uh, college or even over at my uh, aunt and cousin's house is that I actually have a plan now. I'm not just uh, saying, okay, I don't want to work. I feel that, you know, the first step in me actually doing something and earning myself money outside of, you know, getting a job, working the 9 to 5, or in my case, you know, the 2 to 10s, is uh, actually removing myself from the workplace. Now, I know this sounds like cutting your arm off in order to get a new uh, biomechanical body. I feel in the long run this will help me out. And, you know, if all else fails, you know, say I don't make a dime with uh, SpicyMelon.com and I just, you know, perpetrate myself further and further into debt by trying to make these sites. I could go back to the workplace. I'm not completely worthless. I can go back and get another job if I really want to. I could go back, you know, maybe work at McDonald's, Burger King, things like that. I could even get a job over at uh, Chiefs, which is another uh, grocery chain. It's probably more of a local chain, so a lot of people outside of the uh, Ohio, Indiana, possibly even Michigan area are not familiar with Chiefs. But they're a more localized franchise. So all of this is easily fixable. Right now, I just want to use the income that I've saved up, which is uh, probably around 700 now because I spent some money getting things. I get paid this coming Thursday. That'll be my uh, last big check. And then two weeks later, I get a, a smaller check for uh, the two days that I worked in that pay period, unless I decide to combine them, which uh, I highly doubt. So I will be getting probably a, a three to $400 check coming up here directly. So I'll be able to recoup all the money that I've spent and get some more money in the process. I'm not afraid of, you know, risking things. I mean, I'm only 22 years old. What do I really have to risk? I don't have a house. I don't have a car. I don't have kids. I don't have a wife. If there's any time to put your nuts on the table, you know, now's the time to do it because there's, because, you know, I honestly have nothing to lose. I mean, worst case scenario, I'm out on the street. All my things are uh, either thrown out or I can't carry them all. And, you know, that's that. You know, it's easily fixable. I could, although I really don't want to, I could go back to living with my aunt and cousins. I think, honestly, what I should do, if that would happen, would be to simply put my stuff in storage. Either have them store it for me, my aunt and cousins, or just uh, get like a store and lock, pay them a small amount, either a month or a year, whatever they do. Just either get a job, travel, do whatever the hell I want. I'm not going to die from not having a job. I'm not going to lose my life because, oh, I'm not working at Walmart, I'm dead. <laughs> 
all these debts and, you know, student loans and things like that, I am honestly not worried about them in the least because I know over a period of time I could easily repay them. I mean, hell, look at graduates, you know, teachers and doctors and all that. They, it takes even them, the doctors and the lawyers. It even takes them years, sometimes even decades to pay off their student loans, either because they're not you know, making the money to just pay them off in one foul swoop or, you know, they already got the big house, the big car, and they don't want to spend too much extra money, you know, as long as they're paying something on on their uh, student loan, then, you know, it's satisfying the creditors, so that way their credit's not bad. Why should they give a shit? I mean, they're in the same boat as, you know, the guy who signed up for, like, sports medicine, or the crazy-ass people who signed up for Asian studies, or English. They just, you know, they pay the minimum amount, maybe a little more if they get some extra money, and that's that. I'm honestly not afraid. I haven't paid anything on my uh, student loans as of yet. I'm kind of glad I didn't, because that way, you know, I have 700 in the bank right now. Well, actually, it's a little more, so it's probably, like, 740, 750. And if I were to uh, pay off or pay on some of my student loans, and I do have some credit card debt, but it's it's not that much. I think collectively it's under a thousand, which is like fucking chump change compared to what you know some people go into debt with as far as credit cards go. In comparison to a lot of people who go in debt, I think combined the total amount of debt that I have is less than thirty thousand. Which honestly, it sounds like a lot, but compared with the average American, it's it's next to nothing. With my websites, yeah, that's right. I said you know more than one website, I feel confident that I'll be able to easily repay those debts or at least begin a payment plan on those debts so that way I don't have to worry about them anymore and my credit score is uh, raised which would definitely help me in uh, getting a better car unless you know I also happen to pay for the whole thing in cash which is another possibility but I think I might want to boost my credit that is my plan for now uh, this is Andy San signing off you guys have an excellent day and remember to read Timothy Ferris's The 4-Hour Workweek it is an excellent book I've, I haven't even finished reading it yet and I'm already like totally hooked he had me at a pa by page 33 I'm continuing to read it and I think you guys should read it too alright see ya